Welcome back to another video on the channel. It is finals day in the Cincinnati Open, the best day of any tennis event, when the four best players of the tournament will battle it out for the two titles. Probably an unexpected finals lineup in both draws. You know, we've got two players in Milos Reinich and Victoria Zarenka who have made a lot of finals in the past couple of years. They haven't had the best years in tour. Um, starting off with Victoria Zarenka. Um, you know, she's a fantastic player. Um, you know, when two Australian Open titles and was well number one in 2012, also reached a couple of finals in the US. So, should be going to next week in fantastic form, knowing that she's probably at home on a hard court, um, playing on a fast court again in New York. Um, you know, she'll be hoping for a big run. And also, Milos Reinich, you know, he's reached a Wimbledon final in the past before losing Andy Murray. But a player again who hasn't had the best couple of years in tour, so for him to return from lockdown, um, serving forehand looks absolutely as good as it ever has. Um, a massive weapon, particularly on a fast hard court, it'd be a danger to all next week. Um, in the danger to Djokovic today as well. Anybody with those weapons on a fast hard court is going to cause major problems as he's shown this week so far. Um, but I think you were looking at the likes of Team and Medvedev to reach the final against Djokovic um, on the women's side, obviously the likes of Serena and Pliskova um, who went out early. But we're going to have two fantastic finals today and the four people that are there um, fully deserve it and I'm looking forward to both finals. I think they'll both be close. Um, so just looking at the women's players first and sort of predicting who I think will win the final. Um, as the Renga came through, it was a, a very good match I felt yesterday against Joe Conda. Um, we all know Conda's had a fantastic week, reached yesterday's semi-final without dropping a set. Um, hasn't had the best of records in semi-finals, which unfortunately continued yesterday. You know, she's just been a player throughout her career who I feel struggled mentally in semi-finals to cope with the match situation. Um, you know, she led again yesterday, she had chances in that second set to win it, but we've seen it time and time again, particularly at Wimbledon. Um I think she struggles with the pressure at Wimbledon of being the home favourite and, you know, everybody willing it to win and you know, she's been in Wimbledon quarter finals where she's been up against opponents that she really should be beating, um, getting to winning positions in sets and throw them away and for Joe I think it is a matter of time. I think she's too good not to reach a final of a Grand Slam um, you know, she's a fantastic tennis player and I think as she gets older, more mature, more experienced I think that win will come and I think she's a player that when one win comes you know, you could win, win two or three and she just needs that breakthrough win you know, yesterday was the same old story she won the first set, played fantastic tennis um, in the second set she didn't really do a lot wrong but she did have opportunities to, to break as a ranker and win it in straight sets and I think the right was sort of on the wall the the more the match went on, I think Azarenka varied her game up better, you know, started coming into the net more, keeping the point short. Um and when she got the early break in the third set, the right was really on the wall. Azarenka just sort of ran away with the match, but uh Azarenka's played fantastic this week, you know, really aggressive, um, fantastic forehand and serve and we haven't seen a lot of her obviously in the past few years, down injury and stuff, but a thirty one year old to come back from lockdown with the performance that is, um she looks a re rejuvenate the player and she's gonna throw a her hat in the ring for the US Open. Um, got massive experience as well. Won Grand Slam titles in the past, which is hugely beneficial up against a lot of young players. Um, but she'll have a very tough task today to beat Naomi Osaka, who again has had a, a fantastic week. Um, beat Elise Mertens in straight sets yesterday. Just blew Elise Mertens off the court really in that first set. As we all know, Osaka can do that to pretty much anybody in the world. She timed the ball well from the off, um, served very well, and the second set was incredibly close. Um, played a real high quality, and you know Mertens will feel aggrieved probably that she didn't win that one. But um, all credit to Osaka. I think you know she's striking the ball so well, um, as she always, you know, hasn't always done. You know, over the past couple of years, she's struggled. I feel mentally to cope with the pressures of all the hype surrounding being world number one and all the media hyping up to win many, many Grand Slams and I think this lockdown period is arguably the best thing um, for Naomi Osaka's career. Um, you know, tennis is a, is a sport that you're just playing week in, week out and you don't really get time to sit down and assess what's going wrong and reassess yourself mentally um, on and off court and see how you can change things. You don't really get an opportunity to do that until the season's over but this obviously lockdown period is has allowed players to sort of reassess where they are in their careers and reassess what's going wrong, analyse the game, um, analyse how they're coping mentally with different situations during matches. 
Uh, but I think it's evident this week that Asak has certainly done that. Um, you see, I think Asak looks a completely different player. Uh, back to the player she was in 2018, playing more freely. Um, coping better when she plays a bad point, just sort of taking the time to reassess and just take it point by point. I think last year when she was playing a bad game, she would play three or four bad games and throw away sets, whereas I haven't seen her do that yet this week. Um, and Asaka probably knows herself, we all know how much ability she's got, you know, she's a fantastic tennis player, I think she's a real perfectionist on the court, um, knows that she's one of the best players in the world and just wants to produce that tennis consistently, um, but playing like she is this week, I don't see anybody coping with Asaka, um, particularly in a fast hard court, you know, the power she hits the ball with, the precision, um, I don't think there's any women's player really with the defence that can, that can cope with that sort of hitting and... I can't look past this act today. You know, I think as the ranker brings a lot of experience. She brings a fantastic game. I'm sure she'll fight fire with fire. Um, you know, she's she'll enjoy the pace and the ball. She's got massive forehand herself. Um, she's played very well this week. But if it's a for me, it's just ruthless. Um, you know, when she gets hit like she does. I mean, that first set yesterday, Mertens is you know being one of the best players in the world the past couple of years, consistency wise, and she couldn't really do anything with Asaka I feel Asaka when she yeah she's just relentless hitter really from on both wings um, can keep the point short and just got a fantastic serve as well um, I do think she'll overcome Azarenka and it'll be a fantastic match and plenty of winners and moving on to the men's side of the draw um, Melos Reines as I mentioned before hasn't had his best couple of years in court but he's played so so well this week um, you know the best form I've probably seen him since Wimbledon um, when he reached the final and the inside out forehand just took Sitsa past the party yesterday. I don't think Sitsa passed done a lot wrong. I think he returned pretty well against what was uh, probably the best serve in the world. He held serve, Sitsa passed throughout the opening set, which is very difficult. He always under pressure to hold serve, no on a break will probably lose you this set. Um, and I don't think he's done a lot wrong. Sitsa passed, you know, he hit winners himself. He tried to vary it up. He tried to keep Reinich off the forehand, but um, yeah, Reinich took a very, very close tie break. I think Sitsipas did actually lead 5 4 um, in the tie break before Reinich just kept holding and serve and then did eventually get uh, that break point of Sitsipas. But Reinich has impressed me so much this week. You know, a lot of people think he's one dimensional. And, you know, yeah, he's got that massive serve, yes, but I do think he's a lot better than players like Apelka and Isner. Um, he's got a lot more in his game. I think his double handed backhand's come on a lot over the years. Um, getting more and more solid around the net and that inside out forehand is just incredible really um, you know Sitsa Pass if he did hit a short ball um, off the return the inside out forehand never really missed you know he's powering the forehand uh, side to side and just keeping Sitsa Pass on the back foot didn't really allow Sitsa Pass to step into the court and hit his hit his own winners and never really got a hold of the match and I think in that second set Sitsa Pass was you know very disappointed and you know, he had a bad 10 minutes um, and threw his serve away. And I think with Reinich, you know, the writing's on the wall. As soon as you lose your break, the serve to Reinich, you know, he's, he's going to serve it out. He's just got that good a serve. And he's the thing as well about mentally, uh, Reinich, he's, I think he's so underrated mentally. He produces that serve and forehand when he needs to. Uh, he never misses a forehand on a on a big point. Um, it's his go-to shot and he's he's so good with it. Um, always produces his serve, I feel, on the biggest stages and served the match at relative ease. Um, didn't really come as a surprise. I did predict Reinich to win that one. Um, I just think the weapons he's got in a fast, hard court, uh, unless you the likes of Djokovic and Dominic team, um, with the defence and stamina and variations to keep him off, uh, to keep away from the forehand, then I don't see many people stopping him and he's going to be a massive... Um, play at next week's US Open and Novak Djokovic um, you know what he uh, is chasing his own record uh, longest unbeaten run I think he's 22 matches now five titles I think it is um, including the ATP Cup at the start of the year which feels like a lifetime ago but um, didn't have his best of days yesterday um, don't know if he's struggling with a neck injury or whether that was a, a ploy to slow down Bautista good um, but all credit to Bautista, you know, he's he's done fantastic this week, beat Daniel Medvedev in the semi quarter final, um, and couldn't really beat Djokovic yesterday. We know he served for the match um, before Djokovic played a fantastic game to break back, but 
yeah, what a fantastic week from Bautista Gut. He's a player that's been consistent on all courts um, throughout the years, makes very few unforced errors, just consistent ball striking. Um, got all the variations, super quick, super fit. Um, and yeah, fantastic tennis player to watch. Um, caused Djokovic a hell of a lot of problems yesterday, um, taking the opening set 6 4 before Djokovic fought back. Um, and the third set really could have went either way. You know, they're both. Timed the ball very well by that point, um, and it did eventually go to a tie break. Um, after both players lost serve when serving for the match, you know, Djokovic served, I think, at 5 4, and then Bautista got good serve for it at 6 5. And you know, the tie break looked like it was going to be incredibly close, but I think over the years with Djokovic, I don't think he's lost a tie break this year, I think it's 8 0, and we've seen Djokovic in Grand Slam finals and Grand Slam semi finals has produced tennis that nobody can live with in the final in the tie breaks and he done that yesterday I think he served three aces in a row and he served and then just returned and just broke Bautista Gut down and eventually beat him 7 on the tie break which nobody saw coming but you know I don't think Djokovic has had his best of weeks I think he timed the ball and played fantastically well against Tenny Sangren um, but yesterday you know he might have been struggling with the injury he might have just had an off day but I think to show that Djokovic has had an off day um a bad serving day as well you know he did serve 14 aces but it was a very long match and I don't think he, he his, his first serve percentage couldn't have been much more than 50% I think he, he missed his serve on a lot of big 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 um games and did lose his serve on six occasions so you know it's very unlike Djokovic he will have to be a lot better today but um I do think we'll see a better Djokovic you know he's he's, he's a player that's chasing all the titles and to, to lay down a marker by winning Cincinnati is something that I certainly want to do. Um he's a massive favourite against Ryan Hitch. I think it's ten ten and all in the head in the head to head. Um but Ryan Hitch is playing the best ten of his career and I think if he picked a hard court uh, picked a court to face Jot Rich on this would probably be it. Um if he's ever going to utilise a serve in the forehand, um this is the court to do it on and you know, Djokovic has played Reinich that many times. He reads the serve so well, and I think the more and more he plays Reinich, you know, the easier he reads the serve. But um, you know, I've, I've never seen Reinich serve so consistently and getting that forehand so easily. Um, but doing that against Djokovic is a completely different story. You know, um, you know how good he is with the return, returning it deep, uh, long with pace in the ball, uh, which won't allow Reinich to set up the forehand as easily. Um, during rallies, the depth Djokovic gets, he'll he'll keep Reinich on the run, keep him deep in the court, um, try and keep him in positions uh, that are neutral, that don't really allow um, Reinich to get the run around forehand. Um, but I think for Djokovic today, he needs to be aggressive. Um, you know, he doesn't want to be getting in long rallies and risk hitting the short ball and letting Reinich get in the front foot. I think. Djokovic needs to have a good serving day, look to be serving around 60-70% of first serves and then really move into the court, keep Reinich on the run, you know he's he's a, he's a tall guy, 6'6", six six, uh, not the most mobile, not the quickest, if Djokovic can keep him on the run, um, attack the net, I think Djokovic today a key, uh, keep, try and keep the point short, I think you know that's probably his best opportunity, I think for Reinich, if he's, he's rallying very well this week, he looks very solid in the double-handed backhand, um, just sort of waits for that opportunity to, to open up on the forehand side um, and I just feel for Djokovic today his best ploy is probably to try and keep the point short, just serve well um, and he's going to have to rely on that fantastic return uh, to get into the Reinich games, it could be a, a frustrating day, we know how well Reinich does serve and yeah, it's going to be difficult for Djokovic but I do expect Djokovic to come through uh, you know, we've seen time and time again he produces his best tennis in the finals he's, he's, a, he's a match player um, a tournament winner and just a fantastic um, player who as I say t- produces time and time again at the big stages and I, I do expect him to break down the Reinich serve um, late in the first set or in the second set but even in t- even if I think Melos's best hope is probably tie breaks and even then you know Djokovic hasn't lost a tie break this year and we know how well he how well he plays in them so I think Djokovic is massive favourite um, I do expect him to win it in straight sets um, but yeah, it'll be it'll be a close one. There'll be two fantastic finals. Um, there is another video coming out later today. I'm gonna um post out my US Open men's full preview and predictions. Um, I'll be going through each player, um, talking about their chances and history, and also giving me prediction uh, to win the event. And then I'll be uh, releasing me full 
women's preview and prediction video tomorrow ahead of the start on Monday um, and the videos will start on Monday covering the US Open um, so if you do want to check out me covering the US Open and listen to my preview and predictions for the event then do subscribe um, but yeah I hope everybody's enjoyed the tennis this week if you do tune in the finals later on today I think they're on Amazon Prime from around 6 o'clock uh, but don't quote me on that because I'm not certain um, but yeah, do enjoy the tennis, as I say, if you're tuning in today. Um, please like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next video.